Hello, Sherry Truler with Red Apple Auctions. Today, I want to talk about three literary phrases. They're not all adages, but they recently came up in short order. And I thought, wow, three of them in a row. That's the universe's sign I should share this with you. So the third one I'm going to share is directly related to you professional fundraisers. The first two, not so much. But the first one, I was visiting with my neighbor and she was talking about a coworker, I believe she was visiting with. And in the process of the conversation, she says, well, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And the person she was visiting with said, what are you talking about? Cake, eating it? Well, I don't get it. And so she explained, it's usually used in terms of philandering, like in the terms that you've got a marriage, but then someone in the marriage is also looking to have um, relationships on the side. So you can't have your cake, the marriage and eat it too, meaning the relationships on the side that that's the first example. The second one, what was it? Oh, the second one was a group text that I was on with my brother and my mom. And it has to do with a woman in our hometown who just had a book written about her and she's getting quite a bit of press. And the story is pretty fascinating. The woman's in her nineties. She was born in the United States, but when she was a toddler, her father moved the family, her, her mom and him back to the family farm in Poland. And then the war broke out. They lost the farm. Uh, the Then father died in the war and the um, this woman. And now brother, because uh, when they moved back, they had a, an, another baby. So they had a brother. She had a brother now. And mom ended up in East Berlin. And her mother had been very savvy and had saved her daughter's birth certificate from the United States. So at the end of the war, lots of confusion. People are trying to figure out where they go, who can go to the United States, who can't. And so she showed up at the embassy or consulate with her papers, her birth certificate. And the guy said, what? are you doing here in East Berlin? You're an American. And she had to get an interpreter. She doesn't, she didn't speak any English. Uh, she only spoke German, but sure enough, she was an American citizen and allowed to come back to the United States. So it took several years before she was able to bring her brother and her mother over as well. Uh, but to make a short story very long, the idea was that I said in this text exchange, wow, she's getting more than her 15 minutes of fame by being in all these newspapers and everything. And my mom said, what are you talking about? 15 minutes of fame. And it's something that is oftentimes attributed to Andy Warhol, but I read something that said that they really don't think he ever said it. But the idea is that all of us sometime in our life are going to do something good or bad. That's going to get us some publicity, you know, newspapers, TV, social media, whatever the case might be, you'll get your 15 minutes of fame. So in the context of that, I said, wow, she's getting more than her 15 minutes of fame. So that was the second one. And then the third one is directly related to you professional fundraisers, not an auction thing, not a gala thing, not a fund to need thing, but it's the phrase, uh, the phrase, the saying that it's always better to give from the warm hands of love than the cold hands of death. Meaning that when you give something and you're alive, you can mold it, you can direct it. It's better to give from the warm hands when you're alive than to give from the cold hands from beyond the grave and try to direct something there. So for you doing major gifts or maybe capital campaigns, and you know, you're visiting with someone about a 10 or 15, $20 million gift, um, that person may give as part of their estate, and that might build a new rec center for the community. But that donor may have had more joy had they given when they were alive. They could maybe see the building go up, which would have brought them joy. Maybe they could see the programs that they wanted to fund go into action and change lives, and that would have brought them joy. They could have visited or seen the services that were part of the outreach, and that would have brought them greater satisfaction than after they have already passed. And now they're relying on lawyers and written word and wills in order to try to convey that. And very often when that happens, things don't get used the way they want it to be used anyway. They could have directed it better. They could have molded the clay had they been able, had they decided to give that money or some of that money when they were alive versus waiting until after they had died. So that's where the phrasing comes from. Better to give from the warm hands of love than the cold hands of death. And so for those of you that are working in major donors or anything, you could use the language uh, differently if it is appropriate for the person that you're reaching out to that might touch them in a way that would be um, beneficial and a good reminder for them as to what's going to bring them the greatest satisfaction. 
So, all right. So that's it. Uh, nothing about galas per se directly today, but if you want to visit about your event in 2021, we're doing hybrid, virtual, and in-person events. You can go to my website, click the contact page, and you can set up a meeting with me directly from the website. I'd be honored to visit with you about what your plans are. As always, friends, good luck to you in your fundraising gala.